hello, this is Chambisino Pharmacosis. So we are discussing the general pharmacology. So as I said before, uh, generally we have two branches of pharmacology, which is the pharmacokinetics and the pharmacodynamics. So in pharmacokinetics, mostly we are looking on what the body does to the drug. So mainly we are, we are focusing on the four pharmacokinetic parameters, which is absorption, distribution, metabolism, and excretion. Uh, the second branch of pharmacology, it is the pharmacodynamics, where we are looking what the effect of the drug in the body or what the drug does to the body. So mostly uh, we are going to see the effect and the mechanism of action of the drug. But so far we are still discussing on the pharmacokinetic parameter and we have covered only three aspects of pharmacokinetic parameter, which is absorption, distribution, and the metabolism. So we are continuing with the part, with the last part, or which is the fourth part of the pharmacokinetic parameter, which is uh, the excretion. So. Uh, this uh, diagram, it elaborates the four aspects of pharmacokinetic parameter. So, for example, if you take the drug which is in solid dosage form via the oral route, because it is in form of the solid dosage forms, then it has to undergo the disintegration and the dissolution to release the drug in form of the uh, solution. So the solution form of the drug in the GIT, then it will undergo the absorption into the systemic circulation, which is the blood. Once it reaches into the systemic circulation, then the drug, uh, some amount it will be in the free form, where it will establish equilibrium with the drug, which is in bound uh, with the plasma protein, for example, the albumin. So the free form of the drug, it will undergo the distribution into the site of action to mediate the pharmacological effect into the site of action. Also, the drug which is free, which is available into the systemic circulation also, it can distribute into the uh, other organ which is responsible for the metabolism, where it will be metabolized means it will be converted from the nonpolar uh, to the polar drug, which is uh, water soluble. So you form the metabolite, which is in form of the water soluble. Then the water soluble form of the metabolite, it will be read, uh, excreted along with uh, uh, by using uh, the different excretory organ, for example, it can be excreted via the kidney, means along with the urine. It can be excreted in the bile, or it can be excreted in the GIT, means in the feces. Also, it can be excreted via the skin, means in the sweat glands. Also, it can be excreted in the saliva. So for today's session, we are focusing on the excretory organ, the way how the drug is being excreted. Because once we take the drug, once it will mediate the pharmacological effect, then we don't need more of that drug. So we have to excrete it. We, uh, we have to excrete it via the excretory organ. So by definition, uh, excretion, this is the passage out of the systemically absorbed drug. So the drug is already uh, taken into our body. It is in the systemic, it is in the blood. Then we have to remove those drugs. So that's why we say it is the passage out of the systemically absorbed drug. So if you take the drug, for instance, here, via the oral route, then it will be taken into the esophagus up to the stomach. If it is acidic drug, then the absorption it will take into the stomach where it will reach into the systemic circulation. But if it is the basic drug, then absorption it will take in the alkaline medium where it is a small intestine where it will be absorbed into the systemic circulation. As I said, once it reaches into the systemic circulation, then it will establish equilibrium between the free form of the drug and the bound form of the drug. Then the free form of the drug, it will undergo the distribution. So this is the distribution into the site of action, where it will mediate the pharmacological effect. Once it mediates the pharmacological effect, then we have to remove the drug into our body. So it will depend with the nature of the drug. If the drug it is in form of the lipid soluble form, then it will not be excreted via the excretory organ unless it will undergo the metabolism in the uh, in the organ which is responsible to the uh, for the metabolism. Mainly, it is the liver, where the lipid soluble form it will be converted uh, into the polar form. Then it will be ready to be excreted via the excretory organ, for instance, the kidney. But if the drug that is consumed, it is in polar form, then there is no need for the metabolism. Once it mediates the pharmacological effect, it will be uh, direct excreted via the excretory organ, which is uh, the kidney. So for today, we are focusing on the different uh, uh, organ which is responsible for the excretion of the drug, but mainly uh, the major uh, organ, it is the kidney, but we have other minor organ, which is, uh, we call it as an extra uh, renal excretory organ. So this uh, include 
Uh, the GIT means the dug is created via the uh, with pieces. Also, we have the lungs as the minor organs. Also, we have saliva, sweat, and milk. These are, uh, are the minor, minor organ which can help to excrete the drug. Usually, it excretes a money or a minced amount of the drug, but majorly, majority of the drug, it is excreted uh, via the kidney. Uh, the metabolism actually takes place in the nephron as the basic function unit of the kidney. So in case of the kidney, uh, this is the major important channel for the excretion of majority of the drug. So for this part of the extra renal excretory organ, we will just take it in a briefly because it is very minor, uh, minor organ participating in the excretion of the drug. So this is means it's via the GIT, uh, this is the drug, it is excreted actually, especially for those drugs which have larger molecular weight, uh, molecular weight which is greater than 300. So this drug actually it is excreted in the bile. Once it is excreted in the bile, then it will be discharged into the duodenum. Once it reaches into the duodenum, then it will, uh, actually because it is complex, there is a special bacteria which is available into the duodenum where it will participate in the deconjugation, means the drug uh, in the liver, once it is metabolized, especially for those drugs which is uh, undergo the metabolism via the conjugation, it means in the second phase of the metabolism via the conjugation. So it is conjugated in the liver, then it will be discharged into the duodenum in the bile, then in the Duodenum, there is a special bacteria that will cause the deconjugation, means uh, it will separate the glucuronide, the glucuronide molecules and the drug. Then the drug, some amount of the drug it will be taken uh, in the fist, while uh, the another drug it will undergo the reabsorption. So this, it will undergo the so-called enterohepatic recycling system. So as I said, this is the drug which is taken via the oral route. Then it will undergo absorption via the portal vein, reach into the liver. In the liver, because this drug, uh, in the liver there is a special enzyme called the, the UDP gluconosal transferase enzyme. This enzyme, it will transfer the gluconide molecule and form the complex called the, uh, the GD molecule. So this is very complex molecule to the extent that uh, it cannot be excreted via the systemic or via the, 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 the kidney. So what the only option it is will be discharged in uh, via the bile duct and reach into the duodenum. Once it reach into the duodenum, a special bacteria enzyme, which is the normal flora, it will participate in the deconjugation of this molecule. It will separate the gluconide molecule and the drug. Then some minute amount of the drug, it will be excreted uh, with the feces while the other drug, it will undergo reabsorption. So this is enterohepatic recycling system. So majority of the drug which can undergo this kind uh, of excretion, uh, especially the erythromycin, oral contraceptive pill, ampicillin, tetracycline, rifampicin, and phenolphthalein. These are just a few drugs, especially it undergo metabolism uh, via the conjugation with the gluconide and they form the complex molecule that will not be excreted uh, via the, uh, the kidney because of the small pore in the glomerular, uh, uh, glomerular capillaries. Then it will only be excreted via the, uh, the, the feces along with the bias. Also another extra renal organ for the excretion, it is called the, the lungs. So lungs are uh, normally it excrete those drugs which exist in the form of the gaseous or volatile, especially drugs like the general anesthesia, for instance, in the halothems. Also the drug like nitrous oxide, which is the general anesthesia also. Also, we have the paraldehyde alcohol. So this kind of the drug, it is excreted in the lungs via the exhaled uh, air. So normally it will depend with the partial pressure or saturation of the drug in the blood. So the higher the saturation of the drug in the blood, this it will be easier for the drug to be uh, excreted via the exhaled uh, air. Normally it will depend with the solubility of that drug in the blood. So we have some of the, of the uh, of the drug, for example, nitrous, uh, nitrous oxide. These are the general anesthesia. This, if you see this kind of the drug, the solubility, it is solubility in the blood, it is very less. So because of the less solubility, then it will be easily uh, excreted along with the exhaled air in comparison with another substance like alcohol where the solubility, it is very high uh, in the blood where it will be somehow difficult to be eliminated via the lungs. So these are some of the drugs, for example, uh, the general anesthesia, drug like potassium, aldehyde, 
we have alcohol and another drug that I said it is nitrous oxide and the halothene as a general anesthesia. Also, we have another uh, uh, extra renal organ, which is the saliva. Uh, normally, the saliva in the human, it is uh, uh, acidic in nature. Uh, it has uh, the pH of about uh, 6.4. So as you know, because of the acidic environment of the saliva, most of the drug that we expect it to be excreted, it is the drug which is in basic uh, environment. Because if we want to excrete the drug, uh, normally, we have to provide the opposite medium. If the drug it is the basic, then the uh, environment that has to be provided, it should be the acidic medium. Now the saliva that we have, actually it has acidic pH, which is 60.4. So majority of the drug, which is basic, then we expect it to be excreted in the saliva. But the problem is we have some of the drug normally it, uh, it will concentrate in this environment where it will create, for example, in part of the gums, where it will result to the gum hyperplasia, for example, the drug like fintoin. So this is the drug which is mainly excreted in the saliva, but because of the higher concentration normally, it will lead to the side effect of the gum hyperplasia, as you can see in the diagram. Apart from that, also we have the drug like lithium, potassium, rifampicin, and heavy metal. These are some few just the number of the drug that can be excreted via the saliva. Also, the last organ is through the skin, means excretion through the sweat, uh, via the sweat glands. Uh, normally, these are uh, excreted in the surface of the skin. Uh, this, it can result to the, uh, 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 it can lead to the hypersensitivity because the drug now is getting via the skin surface. So it can lead to the side effect like uh, the acute uh, epidermatitis. Uh, also, it can lead to the hypersensitivity reaction that is harmful. But in another way, it is also benefit for, especially for treatment of those skin infection, for example, the fungal, for example, the drug like benzoic acid, salicylic, these are some uh, drug that is excreted through the surface of the skin. Concentration is high on the surface of the skin, so it might be beneficial for the treatment of the skin uh, skin disease. Or in case of the milk, uh, this is uh, we have some number of the drug which is excreted on the uh, on the milk means in the mammal glands. So that's why we have some restriction for the lactating mother because. We have many drug which is taken uh, in the adult. We have to restrict it to get access into the uh, the infant because uh, of the different side effects that can lead in uh, to the infant. So care should be taken uh, for the drug that uh, will be taken uh, by the lactating mother because that drug it has to be it can be excreted in the milk and consumed by the infant, which can uh, precipitate it to a particular toxicity. Uh, actually, the way how it is excreted, actually it is in form of the simple diffusion. So most of the liquid uh, drug, which is lipid soluble or less bound to the plasma protein, it can easily pass through the milk. So we have to avoid because of the side effect that can be mediated by this drug. So we have the uh, uh, drug like uh, coramphenico, it has effect in the uh, infant. So it should be avoided uh, taken by the lactating mother because it can lead to the uh, the baby gray syndromes. The drug like tetracycline also should not be used by the pregnant woman because it can cross through the milk, it means excreted through the milk, and it can lead to the, uh, the, 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 the effect on the bones and the teeth of the newborn baby. So this, it has to be avoided. Uh, that's another drug like sulfonamide, barbiturate, rezapine, and alcohol and caffeine, these are just a few number of the drug which can be ex uh, excreted via the milk means in, in the lactating mothers. So these are just the, the extra renal organ, but what we are going to discuss in detail for today, it is the renal excretion, which is the principal organ for the excretion of the drug. So the amount of the drug which is excreted along with the kidney means it is excreted uh, in the water environment because it is water, uh, the urine actually it is uh, in, in water soluble. So we expect the drug to be excreted through the kidney, it should be polar not nani, uh, not lipid soluble. So if it is lipid soluble, first it has to undergo the metabolism, then it will be allowed to be excreted through the kidney. So the renal excretion actually, it is equal to the glomerular filtration, means the filtration that take place into the glomerular, uh, plus the tubular secretion, which take place into the tubes, also minus the 
uh, the, 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 the tubular absorption. So we will see in detail the way this formula, uh, it analyzes those the principle of the urine formation or the way how the drug, it will be taken from the blood till it will be excreted in the urine. It has to pass through different uh, uh, process, including the glomerular filtration, the tubular secretion, and the tubular reabsorption. So let's see now the anatomy and the physiology of the kidney before uh, going through those uh, uh, four pro three processes uh, for the excretion, which is the uh, filtration in the glomerular, the secretion in the renal tube, and the reabsorption in the renal tube. So this is the kidney, and we say that in the kidney there is a small or uh, the, the basic function unit, the so-called nephron, where the, all the process it takes place. So this is the magnified diagram for the nephron. Um, the magnified diagram for the nephron. So if you can see now, it has different compartment, which is the first one, it is called the Bowman capsule. The next is the proximal convoluted tubes. And the next, another one, it is uh, the loop of Henle, the distal convoluted tubes, and the collecting, uh, collecting duct. So as you can see now, Yes, as you can see now from uh, this uh, diagram, once the drug it is uh, pumped uh, in the cardiac output or the cardiac output in the blood, then it will be taken uh, in uh, into the afferent arterio into the Bowman capsule. So then it will undergo the glomerular filtration. So the drug that will be allowed uh, filtered into the Bowman capsule, it will pass through the, uh, the, the renal tube where reabsorption will take place. It means it will be reabsorbed into the peri, uh, peritubular capillaries. And some of the drug that will not be filtered, it will pass through the efferent arterial, then it will be secreted into the renal tubes. So we are going to see it in detail. So this is the diagram that shows the, uh, the Bowman capsule where there is efferent by afferent arterio and efferent uh, efferent arterios. So, as you can see now, this is the peritubular capillaries, as shown in the diagram. This is the efferent uh, afferent arterio, in which the blood which is pumped from the heart it will be taken into the kidney and enter into the Bowman capsule via the afferent arterio. Then. Once filtration takes place, especially for those drugs which is not in bound, uh, which is bound with the plasma protein, it will not be uh, filtered into the Bowman capsule, where it will be taken via the efferent arterio, where it will undergo the process of secretion, as you can see the diagram. So it will be moving now from the blood capillaries into the renal tubes. But also the drug which is filtered now in the renal tube, uh, some amount of the drug it will undergo the simple diffusion and uh, migrate into the peritubular capillary. The process is called the the renal, uh, the tubular reabsorption. So we are going to see it in detail. Once the drug which is completely filtered or secreted, then it will be removed via the collecting duct and removed out in form of the urine along with the drug that is consumed. So as you can see, uh, still is explaining the same. So in the renal tube, as I said, uh, once you take the drug, if you can see now here, the drug is coming via the afferent arterium. So this drug, it depends with the nature of the drug, the molecular size of the drug. The drug, which is very complex, it cannot be uh, filtered into the uh, glomerular capillaries. Uh, rather, it will uh, be taken via the efferent arterium. For example, those drugs which is bound with the plasma protein. But for only drug which is in free form, then it will be filtered and reach into the renal tube. Then those drug which is bound with the plasma protein, it will be taken via the efferent arterial and uh, uh, get the secretion along with uh, those uh, uh, amount uh, uh, after dissociating, I mean, after dissociating into the peritubular capillaries, uh, free form of the drug, then it will undergo the secretion into the renal tube ready uh, to be uh, excreted. So we are going to see all three process of the urine formation. Uh, the first one, it is the glomerular filtration. So glomerular filtration, as I see, among of the all capillaries in our body, it is the, uh, the, the glomerular capillaries that contain the large pores. So we expect the majority of the free form of the drug will be ex uh, filtered into the glomerulus. So all the drug which is in the free form and uh, small molecular size, it will be filtered into the glomerular. So 
the filtration normally it will depend with the molecular size of the drug. Whether the drug it is lipid soluble, it is insoluble, it will be filtered provided that it is has small size, it is not complex with the plasma protein. So for this case, plasma protein binding of the renal tube, it is the factor that much drug is filtered. It means that it depends for it to be uh, filtered into the glomerular. So it does not depend on the lipid solubility because whether the drug is lipid soluble or it is non-lipid soluble, filtration will take place provided that the drug it is uh, uh, it has a small size. So this BD, it represents the drug which is bound with the plasma protein and FD, it represents the drug which is in a free form. So once the drug it is taken via the afferent arterial, then it will reach into the Bowman capsule where the drug which is in a free form, it will be filtered and reach into the renal tube. The drug which is bound with the plasma protein, this it will not be filtered, it will be taken along with the efferent arterial as the peritubular capillaries. So now we are focusing on the drug which is filtered into the glomerulus, uh, which is filtered into the glomerulus, fitted now it is in the renal tube. This drug which is carried uh, bound with the plasma protein and carried in the peritubular capillary, this we are going to discuss later on. So we are going to see now the drug which is uh, filtered into the uh, the, 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 which is filtered into the glomerular capillary. Now it is in the renal tube. This is the drug that will undergo the, the, the tubular reabsorption. So this will be the second uh, uh, mechanism for the urine formation, which is the tubular reabsorption. So this normally it occur by the passive diffusion. There is no active uh, uh, active mechanism or active transport which is required for the drug to undergo reabsorption. Though we have some few limited number of the drug actually to undergo the 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 the, the, uh, the active reabsorption. For example, the octopurinol drug. Uh, we have the uric acid also to undergo the passive uh, active diffusion. But majority of the drug normally it get reabsorbed via the passive diffusion. And uh, for the drug to be uh, reabsorbed, normally we have two factors in which the drug it will depend. First, it is the lipid solubility and uh, the pH of the renal tube means the drug, whether it will undergo the ionization or it will remain in an, uh, uh, an ionized form. So as you can see now here from the diagram, those drug which pass through the renal tube uh, undergo the, gl the glomerular filtration, once it reach into the uh, renal tube, especially the proximal convoluted tube, which is the, this region, then for the lipid soluble drug, actually it will get uh, reabsorbed direct and reach into uh, absorbed into the peritubular capillaries. But the, if the drug it is in the form of the weak acid or weak base, then it is absorption. It will depend with the pH means ionization. So the drug will get uh, ionized the form of the drug. Some amount of the drug will be ionized while another one it will be in form of an ionized form. So the ionized form of the drug, then it will be uh, absorbed and reach into the peritubular capillary, while the one which is in an ionized form, uh, ionized form, it will still remain into the renal tube. So here now the absorption, it will depend with the ionization. Only the ionized drug, it will be reabsorbed and reach into the renal tube. So two factors now that we are uh, concentrating more in case of the reabsorption. The first one, as I said, it is the lipid solubility. Only the lipid soluble, it will be reabsorbed. And the second one, it is ionization, which is the pH uh, dependent, as you can see from the diagram here. If the drug is in form of the lipid, then it will be easily uh, get reabsorbed and reach into the renal tube. While the drug, which is uh, lipid insoluble, then it will remain into the, uh, the renal tube and then it will be excreted along with the urine. So that is all about uh, the ionization and it is, very, uh, I mean like the reabsorption and it is very important actually in the clinical practice to know whether the drug uh, taken, it will be in form of the uh, weak acid or weak base, whether the reabsorption, it is extensive in the renal tube or not, because sometimes it happens if someone uh, has consumed a number of the tablet and they get poison. For that case, we have to help the patient by providing uh, changing the environment based on the nature of the drug which is consumed. So first you have to provide the, uh, the, the, the medium which is opposite with the nature of the drug. So if the drug which is consumed or which make the poisoning, it is in the form of the, uh, the weak acid, then for the weak acid, you have to provide the basic environment so that the drug, it will uh, not be uh, reabsorbed so that it will be excreted. So as you can see from here, 
the lipid soluble drug it is filtered into the glomerular and diffused back uh, diffused back but not the lipid non lipid soluble so this it will not be able to diffuse back and reach into the renal tube also for the anionized drug then the anionized drug which is filtered into the glomerular capillary this it will be able to diffuse and reach into the blood, but the ionized form, it will remain uh, on the renal tubes and then it will be excreted along uh, with the urine. So in this case, actually it depends with the pH of environment, whether it is a weak acid or it is a weak base. So things to remember here, it is the medium that you have to provide. If you provide the acidic medium for the drug, which is, uh, uh, which is the basic, then you will enhance the excretion. But providing the opposite medium means uh, the drug, a uh, large amount of the drug, it will be in form of an ionized form. Uh, I mean, it is in form of ionized form, then it will be ready to be excreted. But if the, we provide the same medium, we expect the larger quantity of the drug to remain in form of uh, the anionized, then you will enhance the absorption of the drug. This normally it precipitates uh, to, uh, to the poison. So, for example, you can see here now the drug is in form of uh, acidic. So, this free form of the drug now normally for acidic drug, if the uh, if the drug it is acidic, then you provide the acidic environment. You expect a larger quantity of the drug it will remain in form of anionized. So, reabsorption will take place. But if the drug it is in form of the basic then providing the acidic environment, then this drug, it will remain unionized and it will be excreted in the renal, uh, in the renal tubes. So what you have to remember here is uh, the medium that you can help uh, to provide whether for alkalization or acidification. This is helpful in clinical practice for somebody if it is, uh, somebody may be committed a suicide or homicidal. So, what are the, uh, the, the, the chemical agents that you have to give for alkalization or acidification? So for alkalization, you usually give the IV infusion of sodium carbonate, but for acidification, we give the uh, 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 infusion of the arginine hydrochloride followed by the so, uh, ammonium chloride. So this it will be helpful, especially uh, in case of the poisoning of, if someone is committed a suicide for, so for, for a particular drug. So first you have to, uh, you have to know which type of the drug is consumed by the patient, then you can decide the environment that you can provide, whether it is acidification or it is uh, it is al uh, alkalization. So the last part now, which is the tubular secretion, as I, can, as I told you before, that the drug which is bound to the plasma protein, it will be taken with the efferent arterial. So in the efferent arterial, then this drug, uh, it will be excreted or it will be secreted into the renal tube. Now, the secretion into the renal tube here, it is with the help of the organic transporters. So we have the special organic transporter, which is the acidic organic transporter and the basic organic transporter. And this uh, transportation, normally it requires the ATP. So it is the active, uh, active secretions, as you can see. And this is, it is by direction. So the drug, it can move from uh, the, the the renal tubes into uh, from the blood blood capillary into the renal tubes or from the renal tube into the blood capillary. So it is uh, vice versa. So this case normally it is very important also to know uh, the way how the drug or the number of the drug which undergo extensive secretion. And uh, sometimes if the transporter it is the organic acid transporter, so it is only the acidic drug will be transported or through uh, this channel. So sometimes if you take the drug of the same nature, means the acidic and the transporter, uh, the transportation system which is the organic acid, competition is possible. So the drug with less affinity it will remain into the renal capillaries. Only the drug which have high uh, uh, high affinity, it will be secreted into the renal tube. So this is very important also in the clinical practice. Some of the drug which have short half-life, for example, the drug like penicillin or uh, penicillin, this drug normally it is taken uh, along with the drug which have high affinity for the secretion so that to prevent the drug with weak, acid, uh, weak affinity to be retained into the blood so you can prolong the half-life. So for instance, the drug like salicylate, it will decrease the secretion of the methotrexate. 
So if you want to enhance the effect of the methotrexate, you have to take it along with the salicylate. But sometimes also you can take the, uh, uh, the probenesit, which is the uricosuric agent used in the gout, it can be taken along with the nitrofrantoin. So this, it will retain the nitrofrantoin into the, uh, uh, into the blood. So this nitrofrantoin, uh, it is used especially for the, uh, the urinary tract infection. So to prolong the duration of action of the nitrofrantoin, you have to take along with the probenesit. So this is the, 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 the clinical important for all those four, uh, three aspects, which is the glomerular filtration, uh, reabsorption and the secretion, and it is a clinical application. So also we are going to see in detail on the kinetic of elimination. Normally here, it is the rate of elimination and the clearance. So rate of elimination, normally it is the amount of the uh, drug which is eliminated per unit time. So for instance, uh, this is uh, the afferent arterial in which the drug it is contained into the blood. So this it will de it determine the concentration of drug which is available into uh, into the systemic secretion. Then it will be transported into the afferent arterial. In the afferent arterial, then it will undergo the filtration into the Bowman capsule. Later on, after all uh, three processes, then it will be excreted. So what you are looking here is the amount of the drug which is eliminated per unit time. So according to this, uh, if you see from the diagram, it is 500 microgram uh, per minute, this amount of the drug is excreted. So also we are going to see the clearance Clearance, this is the volume of the plasma from which the drug is completely removed in a unit time. So the volume of the plasma which contains the, uh, the drug, we are going to see now this, how much amount of the plasma is completely removed from the drug per unit time, that is clearance. So here it is the renal clearance. And this, it measures the ability of the body to eliminate uh, the drug. So for this case, clearance actually in the formula, it is equal to the rate of elimination per unit plasma concentration. Means how much amount of the drug is eliminated and what the concentration of the drug it was before elimination in the blood. So you take just the rate of elimination, you divide it by the plasma, uh, plasma concentration as you can see uh, in the diagram. So for instance, if you take 100 m, uh, milligram per liter of the blood is the concentration of the drug in the plasma. 10 milligram per hour is the rate of elimination. So this concentration of the drug, and this is the rate of elimination per hour. So by using this uh, uh, mathematical uh, numerical, numerical information, you can calculate the clearance. As you know, clearance uh, is equal to the rate of elimination you divide by the plasma concentration. So the rate of elimination in this diagram, it is 10 milligram per hour. You divide by the plasma concentration, which 100 uh, milligram per liter. So you will end up getting 0 0.1 uh, liter per hour. So this is the clearance. Means the same diagram here it show, this is the amount of the drug which is uh, reaching, which define the plasma concentration. And this is the rate of the drug which is uh, eliminated per unit hours. So clearance is equal to the rate of elimination, which is 10 milligram divided by the plasma concentration, which is 100 milligram per liter. Then you will end up getting 0 0.1 uh, liter per hour as the clearance. So the last thing also we are going to see as the last part of this part of excretion, which is the order of kinetics. So order of kinetics normally, uh, there are three order of kinetics, which is uh, the first zero order, the first and the mixed order. So actually the rate of, and this is, it is derived from the equation that show the rate of elimination in relation with the plasma concentration. So the rate of elimination mathematically is direct proportion to the plasma concentration raised the power order. Now this order, it can be zero order, it can be first order, or it can be the mixture of zero and the first order. So we are going to see one order after another. As I said, zero, first, and mixed order. So starting with the zero order, and the, in each order, we are going to see how the rate of the reaction in relation with the, the rate of elimination in relation with the plasma concentration. 
and what is the half life and what is the uh, the clearance of the drug which is undergoing a particular order of reaction so if you see now for the zero order of the reaction for example we said that the rate of elimination is direct proportion to the plasma uh, plasma concentration but if it is zero order then we put zero in the uh, in the part of the order so any, any, anything power power zero is equal to one so rate of the elimination is equal to one so now the rate of elimination it is constant for the zero order of the reaction as you can see so the rate of elimination normally it is independent on the plasma concentration. So if you will increase the plasma concentration, the rate of elimination will not be affected because it will be constant. So this kind of the drug, which is undergoing zero order of kinetic, it is very dangerous. Monitoring is required. It is not safe because when you increase the plasma concentration, the amount of the drug which is eliminated will not change, will still remain the same. So it can provide the chance for the toxicity. So monitoring and careful should be uh, should be uh, taken into consideration whenever you define that the drug that you are giving to the patient, it is undergoing the zero order of kinetics. So for instance, now here, as you can see, uh, in this example, the plasma concentration is 10 milligram per milliliter, while the rate of elimination, it is uh, one milligram per uh, per minute, but because this is the zero order uh, or zero order kinetics, then this rate of elimination it will remain constant. It will remain constant. If it will remain constant, now keeping the rate of elimination constant, changing the plasma concentration, then you will see how the clearance will be affected. So here we will calculate the clearance. So if we initially, if the uh, the plasma concentration it was ten milligram. Then calculate the clearance. So clearance, it will be the rate of elimination, which is one divided by the plasma concentration, which is 10 now. So this, it will, lay, it will lead to 0 0.1 uh, uh, milliliter per minute as the clearance. Now, if I will increase the plasma concentration into 100 uh, milligram per liter, per, per milliliter, what will be the clearance? Remember the rate of elimination you will keep constant. It will remain still one because here we are talking the zero order. So for this case, you'll see now uh, the rate of reaction, it will still one, while the plasma concentration now you have changed into the 100. Now the clearance will be 0 0.01. So here you can say, um, in case of the zero order, zero order of the reaction, uh, increasing the plasma concentration of the drug it increased the clearance of the drug. As you can see, when it was 10, the clearance was 0 0.1. When it was 100, the clearance was 0 0.01. So if you increase 2,000, then the clearance will be 0 0.001. So now, clearance is keep on increasing upon increasing the concentration of the drug in the plasma. So that's the way how it is uh, affected. So here now, the rate of elimination to remain constant, as I said, clearance will keep on decreasing, as I shown mathematically, how it will be increasing upon increasing the plasma, uh, the plasma concentration. So constant amount of the drug, it is eliminated. So as you can see, the rate of elimination here, it is remaining one. So constant amount of the drug is keeping on being eliminated per unit time. So this uh, zero order of the reaction, sometimes it is called the elimination, uh, it is called the micro mentalist elimination. So for this case, if you see now, for example, if it is the first order, so in the first order, the rate of elimination as usual, it is inverse proportion, is direct proportion to the plasma concentration, but keeping one in the part of the order of the reaction, then you will see the rate of elimination is direct proportion to the concentration. So for this case, Increasing the plasma concentration will affect, it means will increase the rate of elimination. So this drug it is somehow safer because whenever you increase the plasma concentration, the rate of elimination also it will increase. So for this case, uh, we can see now mathematically how it will affect the part of the clearance. Here now, the plasma concentration is changing with respect to the rate of elimination while the clearance for this case now, it will be kept constant. So for example, now calculate the clearance for the first numerical information. For example, the plasma concentration is 10 and then the, the rate of elimination is one. So if you calculate the clearance, 
it will be equal to the rate of elimination, which is 1, divided by the plasma concentration, which is 10. So automatically, you are going to get 0 0.1 uh, uh, milliliter per minute. So this it will be the clearance. But for the first order, we said clearance is constant. So keeping the clearance constant, then you can see the way how the rate of elimination is being affected upon increasing the plasma concentration. So if you will increase now the plasma concentration, if to the 100. Now you can calculate the rate uh, the rate of elimination, how it will be affected. So clearance, as I said, clearance is equal to the plasma concentration, uh, the rate of elimination, which is uh, y that we are calculating. You can assume maybe it is y divided by uh, the, uh, you have to divide by the plasma concentration. Now in this case, it is 100. But clearance is constant, which will be 0 0.1. So you can put here 0 0.1. If you calculate now the uh, the value of y here, which is the rate of elimination, so you can just cross multiplication here, you are going to get 10. So it was 1 now, it is 10. So you can see now, when it was 10, clear, uh, rate of elimination was 1. Clearance is constant, 0 0.1. Now, if you increase the plasma concentration, which to 100, then the rate of elimination, it will increase to 10, while the clearance is constant. So for this case, you can say the clearance is constant throughout, but the rate of elimination will increase upon increase in the plasma concentration. So in this case, because the clearance is remain constant, you can say there is a constant fraction of the uh, the drug which is eliminated. Constant fraction is not constant amount. It is the constant fraction of the drug present in the body is being eliminated uh, per unit uh, per unit time. So this is the zero order and the first order, but some of the drugs, they have behavior of having both zero and the first order. And this drug actually, it starts behaving the first order as you keep increasing the concentration of the plasma, it will shift from the first order to the zero order. So when the drug, uh, when the elimination of some drug becomes saturated over the therapeutic range, the kinetic change from the first order to the zero order, which is very dangerous. So also for this drug, careful should be taken. You have to uh, monitor. You should be within the specific range of the drug. So such kind of the drug, for example, uh, the drug like phenobarbital, drug like naproxen and riboflavin, uh, these are the drug which can change the plasma, uh, which can change the order of the reaction when the concentration in the plasma is keep on increasing or it is beyond the range which is required. So this is just the summary for the zero and the first order that we have already seen that for the zero order, it is independent of the plasma concentration and the rate of elimination for the zero order it will remain constant. And the clearance actually it increases with increasing the plasma concentration. So there is a constant amount of elimination. For the first order, the rate of elimination, it is direct proportion to the plasma concentration. So clearance normally it will remain constant for the first order. And there is a constant fraction of the drug is eliminated uh, is eliminated in the body. So this is just the, uh, the difference between the first order and the zero order, very important. So in case of the elimination, drug eliminated, it is a fixed fraction or constant fraction, and in zero, it is the constant amount, fixed amount. The rate of elimination for the first order, it is proportional to the plasma concentration, while rate of elimination is constant for the zero order. Clearance, normally it is constant in case of the first order, while the clearance keep on increasing in the zero order when the plasma concentration is increasing. But here we are going to see in detail also the half-life, how it will be affected. But in this case, the half-life uh, for the first order, it is constant, while the half-life for the zero order is not constant. In case of the safety, first order drug, it is the more have greater safety compared with the drug which undergo the zero order. And if you draw the graph uh, that show the concentration visas time, normally in the first order, it will show the exponential graph, while in the zero order, it will show the straight line. So now, because of this, uh, the drug which undergo the zero order, 
uh, has to be monitored. So at least you have to understand, uh, you be care with those drugs, uh, which are the drugs uh, uh, has the ability to undergo the zero order. So you can use this mnemonics, which is called the zero watts, zero watts power. So zero, it indicates the drug which undergo the zero kinetic, so zero order. W stand for the warfarin. The first A, it stand for the alcohol and uh, uh, aspirin. And the first T, it stand for the teophylline. And the second one is the probutamide. And the power means the fintoin. So this is very important. At least you have to understand now what are the drugs that can undergo the, 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 the uh, which can able to undergo the zero order of kinetics. So you should be aware. Use the words zero, uh, zero power, or call it, call it the zero word power. So the last part also we are going to discuss here. It is the plasma half life. So plasma half life. It indicates the time which is required for the drug to be reduced the half of which is original. So once you take the drug, actually it will keep on decreasing, but the time that will be taken for that drug to be uh, reduced to the half of which is original, that is called the, uh, the half-life. And we have seen here. So actually when you define the half-life, you can consider uh, this graph that will be plotted uh, for the concentration against time. So this graph, if you can see, once you take the drug via the IV route, immediately the drug, it will uh, increase in the plasma. So the increase, the rapid increase in, of the drug in the plasma, it is not because the drug it is eliminated. As you can see from this graph here, it shows this uh, the deep slope. This deep, sli uh, deep slope here, it indicates the drug has undergoing distribution. It means it is just moving from the systemic circulation going into the different organ, for example, the site of action. So this is not, the drug is not excreted, it is just the distribution. And this will not define the half-life of the drug. But after that, Later on, you will find the drug, it is slowly decreasing from the plasma. This now, it is defining the drug which is eliminated, means just removed from the body. This is uh, represented by the beta. So this is the beta phase. So this beta phase, it is the one that defines the drug which is eliminated. So here, actually, we are going to have two half-life. The first half-life and the second half-life in the beta phase. So whenever you are talking about the half-life, actually we are talking the half-life due to the elimination, not due to the distribution. So two half-life are there. The first is due to the distribution, which is very rapid immediate after the drug reaching to the systemic circulation. And the second, it is the half-life due to the elimination. And this is the half-life that, uh, that, uh, that is defined in the uh, uh, in, in majority of the drug. So here, normally, we are going to consider the half-life of the drug. For example, if the drug is undergoing the first half-life, uh, is undergoing the first order of reaction, this is the formula for the drug which is undergoing the first uh, order of kinetic uh, equation for the half-life. So for the first order kinetic, the half-life remains constant, as I said before. While the zero order, uh, the half-life normally, it will change, is fixed, is not fixed, as I said uh, before. So this half-life now, for the drug to be completely eliminated in the body, we require almost four to five half-life. So the drug has to keep on increasing. You have to uh, monitor for four to five half-life to ensure that the drug is almost eliminated in the body. And this is the, uh, the uh, it is the method that is used to define the frequency of administration of the drug. So if you have to take the drug after the first dose is completely removed into the body, then you have to wait up to four to five uh, half life. As you can see now, you can just calculate the amount of the drug that will remain in the body after four to five half life. So if you take the drug, which is 100%, after the first half-life, only 50% of the drug will be eliminated, 50 will remain into the body. The second half-life, this 50, it will uh, reduce it to half. So it means only 25% of the drug, it will remain in the body, while 75% of the drug will be eliminated. Then the third half-life, this 25, it will divide by two, then it will be 12.5. This, it will remain into the body, while 87.5% of the drug will be eliminated. In the fourth half-life, 
it is only 6.25 amount of the diet will remain in the body while 93.75 percentage of the diet will be eliminated then in the fifth half life uh, it is only 3.1 uh, 3.125 uh, percentage of the drug it will remain in the body while 96.875 it will be excreted. Now this uh, 3.125 uh, uh, percentage of the drug it is almost a, a very small concentration of the drug in the body. So it is almost the, the drug has completed eliminated then you can allow the administration of the next uh, next dose. No, that's why we said that for the complete elimination of the drug we require four to five uh, life. So that is all about the uh, the excretion as a part of the pharmacokinetic parameter. So we expect it to proceed with the part of the uh, the pharmacodynamics. So keep in touch with us uh, to get uh, uh, much knowledge on the subject of the pharmacology. So thank you, thank you very much. We like to remind you uh, to subscribe our channel. You can comment like and share our video uh, as much as possible. Thank you, thank you very much.